All right, welcome to Western Civ. We're getting ready to start World War II here, so let's look at the prelude, the lead up to World War II. We're looking at the 30s, 1930s, as World War II approaches. Our main character is Adolf Hitler, and by 1934, he is in charge of Germany as chancellor and eventually president of Germany. He begins to rearm Germany. He will rebuild their Wehrmacht, their army, and he has his SS, his Schutzstaffel, and this will grow and grow. So you actually have two military forces. You've got the Wehrmacht, which is the normal German army, and then the dedicated Nazis could join the SS. He also will have a Luftwaffe. Germany was not allowed to have airplanes, and so he'll have to start from scratch here with a Luftwaffe, an air force, and it will be placed under Hermann Goering, the old Nazi um, World War I ace injured in the, in the Beer Hall Putsch. Hermann Goering will head the Luftwaffe. This will be very important later on in the war, Hermann Goering's influence over the Luftwaffe. As a part of the rebuilding, he also will have a Hitler Youth, a program for the children, the boys, uh, to basically train them militarily. Um, he takes over Germany in 34 and he goes to war in 39. If he'd have had more time, you know, more than just five years to build this army of young boys, it would have been uh, quite disastrous for Europe. So it's actually kind of beneficial that he went to war so quickly because these guys will be blindly following him. His first act of aggression is in 1936. He is going to occupy or reoccupy the Rhineland. The Rhineland had been demilitarized in the Treaty of Versailles, and his first act is to go against the Treaty of Versailles by uh, rearming Germany and by reoccupying the Rhineland. And of course, France went crazy about this. This is you know, an act of aggression moving to the French border, and Britain didn't support them. Of course, the United States is not going to support them, and so the, British, the French are forced to kind of back off here. The French aren't stupid. They will begin to rebuild their army and move it up toward the Rhineland and this act of aggression. Hitler's next act is to uh, take over Austria. Austria and the Treaty of Versailles had become a tiny little country, and it will now vote to join Germany. This was outlawed in the Treaty of Versailles, but he does it anyway. This is the famous Anschluss, the German word Anschluss for when Austria joins the bigger fatherland. If you'd like to see a movie about this, uh, The Sound of Music, that's what the movie's about. This Austrian family uh, led by Admiral von Trapp. Austria no longer has a navy. And the Nazis will come to him and offer him uh, to have a battleship. The, uh, Hitler will offer him a battleship if he will join the Nazi party. And of course, he will remain true as an Austrian and forced to flee. Hitler's next act of aggression is in, still in 1938. He will claim the Sudetenland, or there will be war. He will threaten to go to war if he does not receive the Sudetenland. It's this purple area here around Bohemia. So here's Bohemia, where the Czechs are, and it's this area. When we created Czechoslovakia after World War I, it included this mountainous area, including a German minority. So they've been living under Czechoslovakian rule for many years, and Hitler in 1938 claims that they're under Czech oppression, and if he doesn't receive them, if they're not let allowed to rejoin the fatherland, it'll be an act of war. This will lead, and he's apparently serious about it, so this will lead to an international crisis called the Munich Crisis. The leaders of Europe will meet in Munich. This will be Mussolini of Italy, Hitler, and from the uh, other side, the Prime Minister of England, Neville Chamberlain, the uh, President of, uh, the Premier of France, the President of Czechoslovakia will show up since it's his country. And the answer is to give Hitler what he wants. This is called appeasement. Uh, Neville Chamberlain of England meets with Hitler. Here he is meeting with Hitler, and they agree that this is all Hitler wants just this piece of Czechoslovakia, and they agree to give it to him. Neville Chamberlain will return to England claiming peace in our time. He has Mr. Hitler's signature that that's all Hitler wants. The next event is 1939. A Nazi-Soviet pact is announced. Nazis and Soviets, Hitler and Stalin, sitting down, their representatives at a table and signing a, a, a trade agreement. The world is shocked by this. You know, these are two sides that absolutely hate each other, want to destroy each other utterly. And here they are signing a, uh, a trade agreement. So what's going on here? Fascism and communism on opposite ends of the spectrum, dedicating themselves to the destruction of one another, have now signed a peace accord. Well, actually what's happening, and it's in the secret articles of the treaty, is that they've agreed to kill Poland. Poland was created after World War I, half from Germany, half from uh, the, what used to be Russia, and so they're agreeing to split it back up. The death of Poland, as this cartoon shows, these two men who hate each other, 
meeting over the death of Poland. And this is what they do. On September 1st, 1939, this is the start of World War II. He invades, Hitler invades Poland, uh, actually only taking the western half. Only the western half of Poland. Who takes the eastern half? Stalin does. Hitler's uh, method of warfare is interesting. It is called Blitzkrieg. It is a new type of warfare using airplanes to bomb first, and then the tanks roll in, and then the infantry will follow up. And it never stops. You just keep moving. The tanks have to keep rolling. The airplanes have to keep flying. Never dig trenches. This was a lesson of World War I. Don't stop and dig trenches. If we stop and dig trenches, we're going to lose like we did in World War I. So no trench digging. Everything must be keep moving like lightning war, blitzkrieg. Here's a map of them invading Poland from here and from here. These arrows invading toward Warsaw. And what you're not seeing is a few days later, these arrows over here, Russian troops, Soviet troops invading the eastern side of Poland. But we'll deal with that later. You know, right now, Hitler's the bad guy. And so Britain and France do go to war. They see this invasion. They will not appease this. And they will declare war. Both Britain and France will declare war on Hitler for his invasion of Poland September 1st, 1939. So it is a war. World War II is on. And then strangely, the end of 1939, October, November, December, not much happens. And then into 1940, not much is happening. In fact, uh, the newspapers will joke about Hitler's blitzkrieg. Well, this must be a sitzkrieg now as everyone's kind of just sitting around, it seems. Some will call it the phony war, that I thought we were at war. Where's the war? Well, Hitler's on the move. The reason that uh, Britain and France aren't moving is because they don't, aren't ready. The French have an army, but they want British help, and the British really don't have much of an army. They have to build an army. So meanwhile, Hitler's in action here. He will move to the north and invade Denmark and capture that easily. And then from Denmark, he will jump up to Norway. Now, the reason for capturing Norway is that this extends all the way to the Arctic Circle, the coastline of Norway. Hitler learned from World War I not to get blockaded by the British, and it'll be very hard for the British to blockade that entire Norwegian Denmark coast. So a little bit of a lesson there for Hitler. Extend all the way up to the Arctic Circle. Well, meanwhile, this is happening. Stalin's capturing stuff or trying to capture stuff. Uh, he is going to invade Finland. One of the agreements at uh, the Nazi-Soviet pact was for that the Russians can have Finland. So the Soviet army will be invading Finland from Leningrad here, all these arrows coming into Finland. And if you'll notice, uh, these arrows will be turning back the other way as the Finns defeat the Soviet troops, Finland stopping the Soviet invasion. Here's a picture of a frozen Russian soldier. The Russian army is just in utter disarray. Uh, Stalin has just recently remove the top levels of the Russian army. They have no leadership. They're just millions of men without leadership. And they just march into utter disaster, into Finland. And of course, Hitler's watching this, watching how terrible the Soviet army is, despite its numbers. In England, we have a new prime minister. Prime minister is Winston Churchill. Neville Chamberlain is voted out of office. And the conservative Winston Churchill is put in. Churchill would be, had been the lone voice for years, screaming about Adolf Hitler, don't let him do this. He's going to take the world to World War II, and no one listened. And now they will listen, as Churchill has been saying. He had actually had a copy of Mein Kampf copied and he in English, and he was able to read it, and he knew Hitler was going to war. Well, Hitler's next big act is on uh, one night, May 9th. He will attack two countries at one time. He will drop his paratroops and glider troops into Belgium and Holland, and those countries are defeated almost overnight as these paratroops just knock out all the communications and roads and cross road crossings and bridges in Belgium and Holland. Those two countries will surrender very quickly. Well, the British and French are just stunned by this. They were expecting help from the Dutch and the Belgians, and now there is no help from them. And so they're on their own to defend the entire Belgian border, and here come the Germans into France. A blitzkrieg into France. The German panzers, that's the word for tanks, these German tanks come rolling through at the place that was unexpected, the Ardennes Forest. Tanks can't move through forest, according to all military calculations. Well, these tanks will. They will roll through the Ardennes Forest in armor divisions. Masses of tanks, hundreds of tanks per division rolling together with the infantry following up. And it's a masterpiece of military uh, might. As the Germans come through Belgium, through the Ardennes, and then sweep into France, and they'll come around the Imagino line over here. So it is a disaster for France. And Blitzkrieg into France, and France falls within weeks. From Belgium, sweeping all the way through northern France, and France quickly surrenders. By June 10th, the Germans are marching through Paris. 
They never got it in World War I. Hitler has done it in a month. In one month, Hitler has taken out France. Unbelievable. The British, now that they see France surrender, what do you do? They want out. The British were up in Belgium, and they will retreat back into France and try to get out of one of the ports near Calais called Dunkirk. You'll have half a million men, half a million soldiers, Dutch soldiers, French soldiers, Belgian soldiers, British soldiers, gathered at Dunkirk trying to get over to England, the 20-mile boat ride over to England. Uh, things are going really slow. And it's at this point that Hitler makes his first mistake. He's been golden to this point taking over countries at will. He makes his first mistake. He stops his tanks and lets his air force, Hermann Goering's Luftwaffe, claims that uh, they can take care of the British. They can knock this British army out from the air. And so they'll begin bombing and strafing this army. Meanwhile, over in England, Winston Churchill will get on the radio and call for all English who own boats, and that's pretty much everybody, to get over the, to France and pick up the army off the shores and it'll happen. It's called the Miracle of Dunkirk. The English people respond, brave the German uh, airplanes, and go over and pick the army up, and we'll get out about a quarter of a million. So of half a million troops at Dunkirk, a quarter million will be rescued, and it'll be called the Miracle of Dunkirk, that the English people have saved England by saving the army, bringing it back to uh, England. It's a huge, great work of propaganda, because really this is a disaster. Half a million men on the beach there, trapped on the beach, and only a quarter of a million escape. And it means a quarter of a million will be taken to German prison camps. So it's really a disaster, but in Churchill, the way Churchill spends it, it'll be called the Miracle of Dunkirk, and England can fight on. 